Hello everyone, it's Shedman from More Than Just a Podcast here. Thanks for tuning in for my first video in the new series, which I'm going to be calling a View From The Shed. This week, at the first in the series, I'll take a look at the Jim White show on TalkSport and the interview he had with uh, Hammers United. Uh, Andy from Hammers United. No, no criticism of Andy, but I, I, I get where he was trying to do something different because we've heard West Ham fans go on there before and not get through to them in giving you know the, the headlines rather than the facts behind it. And Andy tried to allude to a different ways of doing it. You know, it didn't work. Um, I hope, hopefully, it don't discourage him. I see that he apologised, and for me, I don't think he needed to apologise. I think criticism sometimes was a bit harsh on him from the fan base, but so, and at least he put himself up there, which is which is always hard to do when the criticism comes your way. Believe me, I've been there and I've had it. Um, what I find many journalists don't get, and I'm speaking for myself here, is that GSB out does transcend any results or success that we have as a club. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and use this video here to try and tell Jim, Simon, Jordan, those at TalkSport and anybody else watching why GSB out is still valid today. And, and for me, it's, it's just as important now than it is when we're, we're looking up at the table from the lower reaches than what we're doing now, which is looking down. So why GSB out? I'm going to take you back to the day they bought the club. Uh, their press conference, they sat down. They were delighted to say that the club was back in the hands of, of owners that were fans of the club. That was a big thing they pushed. They then outlined that we were £100 million in debt to various institutions. That needed fixing. We needed saving from relegation. And But the big claim was they wanted to move us out of Upton Park, which you know they said couldn't be expanded, to the future Olympic Stadium built, built three miles away in Stratford, which could you know be double the size of what we had at Upton Park. Um, now, the, the move is contentious on many issues for a lot of fans. And I'll try and break it down quickly in towards the outside of the ground and what goes on inside because both are different and, and both come to explain a lot why fans are upset. Outside of Upton Park, we had the pubs, the shops, the cafes, we had the, st the stalls, we had the market. We were easily served. We had three train stations within walking distance, within the same walking distance of Stratford State, uh, Station to the Olympic Stadium, which was East Ham, Upton Park, of course, and Plasto. You had buses where you could easily get down to Canning Town and get onto the Jubilee Line if you wanted to get out that way. Um, if we compare that to the Olympic Stadium, you got one station. You got the DLR at the back, which which is you know difficult to, um, which is still a good 10, 15 minute walk. Let's let's put that into the stadium from Pudding Mill Lane, and then you got a, a good 20 minute to 25 minute, depending on your pace, walk from the Olymp from Stratford up to the Olympic Stadium. Of course, the two walks are different as well, not just in distance, but at Stratford, there's really nothing. Westfield, we can see they bury it off. They don't want fans. Walk round the outside, push you along the road. There's nothing there. There's no food. There's no stalls. There's nothing really for the fans there. So we don't feel we're wanted there anyway. Uh, David Gold, we claim now to take as many traders with them. That's on video. You can look it up on YouTube and you'll find it. But the truth is they've taken hardly any. I said, but more importantly, there's no independent clothing or football program stalls in the park you know in the old days you could walk down green street and see stalls of stalls with t-shirts hats scarves not everybody wants to pay the money the club is paying in the club shop and not everybody and let's face it if everybody that wanted to do it queued up at the shop we'd be queuing there forever anyway also i think outside the ground there's been a disconnect from the fans to the players before the players were accessible, we had we could stand there by the barriers with the into the car park next to the ground. You could get your selfies, get your posters done, you could get your autographs done. Now kept away. If you're lucky, they may stop at the gates as they go, but they try and clear the road and everything. So we've lost that connection now as well. And and the club did spend years with their big claims of how the the inside of the stadium was going to be an upgrade and a far improvement to what we had at Upton Park. Uh, great sight lines was the thing that they used firstly. 
Um, and they had no seat would be further away than the back row of Wembley, which was a true claim when the ground was 54,000. But once they increased the capacity, that was true. That well, that failed to be valid anymore. But what people need to remember is obviously is that while we've got a 60,000 seat stadium, we've probably got about three or 4,000 seats outside of Wembley's sight line, so further than the back row of Wembley Stadium. But then if we go to the seating, you had the famous David Gold interview from around 2012-2013 where he claimed on a BBC TV show um, with Chris Slegg, who's a journalist, he's standing there talking about the seat in the Olympic Stadium, and David Gold says if, the, if it's not equal distance to what we've got now, which was in front of the West End, which was about... I think it was about 10 yards from, from touchline to the front of the West End. He said, we wouldn't go. That's what his words he said, we wouldn't go. Obviously, the closest seat in, in, in the ground is, is eight yards or nine yards, I believe, which is only at the corner flags. Uh, this is on the sides. And then, obviously, it was the same behind the goal. And in the middle, is more 30 yards. Now... With the retractable seating, we all know that packed up never worked from day one. The club building it went out of business. That's nothing to do with West Ham. That's down to the stadium managers. The, the fact is that the seats are in exactly the same position, though, to where they would have been if the seats retractable moved backwards and forwards properly. What the club did do cleverly is they used CGI images from inside the ground. And what they managed to do was to hide the gaps between the lower tier and the upper tier. There's a big discord between the 19,000 fans that sit downstairs and the 40-odd thousand fans that sit upstairs. It makes it difficult for the atmosphere for me to get um, songs that go all the way around the ground. Next up, we'll go to the migration policy. The world-class, the, the greatest migration ever undertaken, Karen Brady's words, um, which a lot of fans are bitter about. Um, it wasn't done on loyalty. It wasn't done on how long you'd had a season ticket. They did it in sections. One of the first things they did was is that they took the fans that used to sit in the, in the lower west, uh, which was next to the tunnel, and they cleared them out of the way. That was going to be corporate now. That's the best seats. That's going to be corporate. You've got to pay big money. So people that had sat next to the tunnel since 1981 when they put seats there, you go. We don't care. You can move elsewhere. Um, so straight away they lost out so in in a way Cameron Brady's claim if you go and ask the West Ham fan base if you did it outside the ground I maintain over 50% of the original season ticket holders or I'd go 75% of the original season ticket holders would tell you they didn't feel the migration was handled well I mean while we're here with Brady let's look at it Cameron Brady got paid a million pound bonus for the stadium move. Now, if we're going to say that West Ham is a business, if we, it, which many people do allude to, even though I don't support West Ham Business Club, I support West Ham Football Club. But let's just say it's a business and that the CEO is Cameron Brady, but probably would be akin to, uh, gets a bonus for moving it. But when you then go and consult the, your customers on what they think, they'll give you a different story. Personally, I think Karen Brady should be made to give that money back because, you know, we were promised, well, not promised, Karen Brady stood in a video updating fans on the progress and said this will give us a world-class uh, team in a world-class stadium. And the fact is, that's, you know, five years later, which is long enough now for the benefits of the stadium to kick in. It's not worked. And Karen Brady's failed on that. So I, I think the fan base is entitled to then ask Karen Brady for that million pound back. These are people that had 17 years at Birmingham City running before they came to West Ham. They've had 11 years at West Ham, 28 years in football, and their only achievement, the only trophy I think they can hold is I think Birmingham won the Freight Rover trophy. And of course, they've had promotions under both clubs. Uh, but remember, to be promoted, they've also relegated the club first. I'm not going to go on about Birmingham, but definitely at West Ham, undermined managers. Zola was undermined from the start. Uh, they talked about him in the press. Uh, they put pressure on him. And, and the way they dismissed him um, lacked any type of, of class, really. They bring in Avram Grant. 
a man who turns out to be the, the, the worst West Ham manager in our history and we end up getting relegated. Grant played a different type of football to Zola. Uh, we're relegated in the championship. They bring in Sam Allardyce. Allardyce, a man who I personally never wanted at the club. Um, he showed no respect to the fan base whatsoever for me. I get it that he got us up. Many people will give him credit for that. I personally won. Uh, every manager they've appointed has had a different way of playing to the previous manager. And not only that is, then they want their own type of players brought in. The fact that we've had five managers uh, under their 11 years, when we were, the five, we were the team that had five managers in 90 years, I know it's different now, but still, you know, that shows you that there's a failure. And what that leads to as well is that in the transfer market, we are constantly regenerating our team because the new manager doesn't, and because he works a different way to the previous manager and the, and the transfer dealings we've done, we have to keep clearing out the players, predominantly at a loss. So if you look at their transfer dealings, that, that we, we have lost hundreds of millions of pounds because of the way they deal in the transfer market. And also, by the way, they constantly revolve the managers the scouting network was seems to have been decimated. So the fact that we allowed Pellegrini and his his, his cohort um, Husilos to bring their sons in, <coughs> so of course when they leave, when they're fired, they all leave, and it leaves us with nothing. A top Premier League football club should have scouting systems set up that bring the players into the whoever the owner is, and should be able to stand on its own feet without the manager actually. So <clears throat> the managers can come and go, but scouting that works stays because the club is playing a certain way of football. Not this, if we go from one side to the other side, clear out those players, bring in new, oh, change the manager, it's not worked, change the manager, change the team. You can see it now in a way, the way that Moyes is, and the club are clearing out all the Pellegrini gambles that haven't worked off, of which there were many. And, you know, we're still losing money at them. In the interview, Jim White made a claim that David Sullivan had put £100 million into West Ham Football Club of his own money. Now, that wasn't picked up on, uh, but is it true? Um, well, let's try and have a look quickly. To buy the club, um, he owns 51% of the shares. It's probably cost him around the 50 to £51 million. Pound of his own money but that's to buy the shares in the club that money that's not money that he's put into the club that's what he had to pay the Icelandics to get ownership of the shares then between Gold and Sullivan between the two of them they put in another around 54 million um, in various stages um, but in interest bearing loans in the first three to four years of owning the club uh, the big chunk of that was about 32 million they put in in 2012 which was to cover the loss of the Premier League money um, after the relegation due to their mistake in appointing Avram Grant. Um, over the preceding years, they put a little bit more in. They took out, though, about £18 million as interest on the loans and part loan repayment. Um, but then last year, due to the COVID um, shortfall in, in money, all the shareholders between them um, had to put in £30 million in, uh, in a in, uh, injection of money due to a share issue. David Sullivan would have had to stump up 51% of that 30 million. So let's say he's put in 15 and a half million pound. You put it all together, his total outlay with buying the club and his investment, I make is about 83, 85 million pound, not the 100 million pound. But then if you look at it, I think Jim White's trying to be clever because over 50 million in that, was not as an investment directly in the club to buy players. It was as an investment to buy the shares in the club. Um, so I'm looking at, he's, 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 he's in for about 30 odd million pound. I'm not an accountant. I think I'm far, you know, but I don't think I'm far off. What I will throw in as well is, he spent about 51 million pound, there or thereabouts in, in owning um, 50% or 51% of the club. If we take their five hundred million pound value of the club, so he's in for about two hundred and fifty-five million pound. You can see that the big winner in the move and in the ten-year ownership of their 
uh, West Ham or over 10 year ownership is the share price has gone through the roof for them. Finally, on the pitch, I've semi covered it in the um, with the, when I was covering the managers and the transfers. But West Ham's lurched from one thing to another. You know, the, the Zola, we were lucky to stay up. They undermined him. They got rid of him. Pointed Grant, disaster, relegated. Brought him Allardyce. Some people uh, quite liked him. I didn't. Bring him uh, Billich. The football on the pitch was outstanding. Possibly due to the signings of Lanzini and mainly Payet now. But then we get the move. And then the fan base and everything begins to unravel for them. The fans have seen they've been lied to and they feel cheated. And and there's a, uh, there should be a level of trust between the fan base and the ownership. But that has been broken by many because many believe football club is not just about results. It's about the whole package, everything that's just been outlined. They're treated to traditions of the club. And just basically tossed them away, sold them in an auction, which is what they basically did at the end of the Upton Park era. They sold off the ground um, in a contentious way. But if you look at the auctions that took place on the, on the pitch and online, they sold off everything. Um, clubs that we played against that had given West Ham gifts, all sold off. Uh, minor trophies that the club had won over its entire history, sold off. Anything that they could sell that could move. Even you think to the seats where they made us pay 50 quid to keep our seat. You know, there's some people in the East End that were the only people to sit in those seats. But if they wanted to keep it, you've got to give, give us 50 quid. You know, they know the price of everything and the value of nothing when it comes to the supporter base. That is basically sums up. You have to look at the whole package of everything they've done over the 11 years of ownership to get to the point why a large section of the fan base will always be GSB out. 